Hello and welcome to something that I have not done in far, far, far too long, and that is to create a podcast,、uh, which I will put out on YouTube, and I might even start a analog classical synthesis. Blog on Google Play or what have you? Why not?、Um, anyway, putting that to one side, the、uh, yesterday I posted Counterpoint One, which is from the Art of Fugue by J. S. Bach,、um, completely synthesized on a Behringer Model D、uh, analog synthesizer, which you may or may not know is a quote clone quote of the. Utterly revolutionary mini Moog. Now, for years, I have been working on synthesis of Bach and other Baroque music using a synthesis system I wrote myself entirely in software, which of course offers you tremendous amounts of synthetic power. It's much more interesting from a creative and challenging point of view to apply some of the lessons learned there to analog synthesis. So let's have a little talk initially about what was used to create those sounds. We have the Behringer Model D that goes through a cheap, and I say cheap, twenty pounds, yeah, thirty dollar analog display.、Um, <laughs> Analog delay pedal bucket brigade. Then we go into a Waldorf、uh, two-pole、uh, envelope following filter. Then another delay pedal,、uh, which may or may not be used in some of the tracks, the four voices. Then、uh, my most important mono to stereo piece of kit, an electro harmonics、uh, polychorus. From there, I cheat because I can't actually afford a real 1970s tape、uh, delay. So I have the uh, T uh, TC Electronics Alter Ego Digital Modeling Delay, which is modeling、uh, a tape. I think it's a tape, the one I was using. Delay. So that's my only digital piece in the signal chain. From that, I then go into a valve headphone amplifier to mellow everything out. Then straight into a digital interface and record each track、uh, in Audacity. Of course, one trick in all of this, which I haven't mentioned, is my new baby, which made me want to do the work、uh, yesterday. Is a Orange Ninety、uh, Moor. Uh, phaser pedal, which、uh, is supposed to be similar to the Phase Ninety, it sounds quite similar to the Phase Ninety to me.、And、the vintage setting is quite nice because it's less intense. And I'm going to say where I put it in the signal chain because it moved around a lot. But two of the voices had quite a lot of phaser effect on them as well. The MIDI is driven out to the Behringer from Aria Maritosa. Sorry if I haven't pronounced that correctly. So all of what's being done is. Hobby levels of price and open source software. So that is the challenge I'm setting myself: is to repeat the kind of work I did with the、uh, Bach Lehmann、uh, temperament well,、uh, well-tempered clam-、uh, clavier, and try and do the same thing with analog kit. So I want to look at temperaments eventually. That's going to be quite a challenge because I have to use pitch bend to do that. And so I just work my way up step by step. And、uh, contrapuntus one is such a lovely piece of music. So, having said that,、uh, somebody very kindly, a big shout out to James Maloney again. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly.、Uh, says some very kind words and also said some very true things about it being hard to hear the separate voices. Yes, I agree. That's a big challenge. And also that the envelopes are quite similar. Now、uh, for the four voices. Now I think all all of those are valid points. So what might be quite interesting is to listen to how the piece comes together. So each individual voice, and then see whether、um, the sculpting of each voice can teach us anything about how they mix together. Now I'm going to sort of try and do this largely in one take, and I'm waffling. So if you don't like that, I apologise. But let's go for it. So here is a sample of the first voice, straight as it was recorded from the Behringer.
Some thoughts. Firstly, that doesn't sound massively like a funky 1970s um, synthesizer, which is a good thing. It shows just how amazingly powerful even entry-level uh, analog synthesis had gotten, uh, in bearing in mind all the components here are from that vintage or uh, at least could have been done in that vintage. The other thing I would like to point out about that piece is many people would think that had reverb on it unless they were very uh, good at spotting different effects. All of the reverb-like effects on that voice and in fact on the entire piece were done with delays. Yet that did have lots of phaser in it. So let's have a listen to the next voice that comes in. we can see, or more specifically here, that the Behringer's doing quite a bit of enveloping. But uh, again, this was an organ piece originally, so we don't want to have too much fade out on the envelope. But we have the interaction of both the loudness and the filter envelope to give something more of a twangy, uh, almost plucked attack and then the note fading out. Lots of phaser, big crunchy sound. This was really quite pushing the envelope for me when it came to doing it in Bach, so very experimental. Possibly too much uh, spectral density at the high end, especially during the attack phase, which could definitely be to do with making the whole thing a bit mm, uh, messy and fuzzy when it's mixed together. But on the other hand, you can tell where the notes start. Or all interesting stuff to mess around with. Here I'm going for a sound like the choir section or even a celestial choir, something more distant. The warbling effects are not phases or anything like that, but due to G detuning and modulation of the filter, a very pure sound and I think probably my favourite sound that uh, I have eked out of the Behringer in this particular project. And the final voice comes in, which is more of a classic synth lead. Interesting point, could it have been enveloped more to fade out more slowly to a quieter sound? Ton of phaser and other modulation effects in there, giving it, yeah, a, a, a classic or baroque calmed down version of a 1980s synth lead, I like to think, but then I am patting myself on the back. So, final step, let's see what those all mixed together sound like. And I did do some compression to try and make it work better in the YouTube space. So that, I'll give a quick clip of the thing that I posted to YouTube. And then I will follow the suggestion of re-EQing each channel to see if they separate each other out a little bit better having done that. So first, I will play the original and then the re-EQ'd without any compression.
So, you're never too old to learn new tricks. Thanks very much, James Maloney. I think the re-EQ'd version without the crushing hand of dynamic compression sounds much more alive, and I'm sure there's a lot more work to be done. But, as always, we see the power of working in a community. So, thank you very much. I will post the entire remixed version after I post this podcast. Thanks, and catch you next time.